it's in a sense a form of biofeedback, but it's different than brain biofeedback. It's really heart biofeedback. And um, that's something we developed here at HeartMath. So that's your, to your point. We've, we recognize that using technology in a positive way could be very powerful. We're very technology-oriented as, as a global society today. So we did develop technology that's good for you. It's good for you. And one interesting note, I just remembered this, is like in 2008, last year, in Jan, excuse me, this year in January 2009, at the Consumer Electronics Show, which is this huge show uh, held in Las Vegas every year, the M-Wave technology actually won an award called the Last Gadget Standing, which is an award that, that people vote on for the most innovative and useful new technology. So we beat out uh, technology from the major uh, companies, you know, things like cell phones and cameras and all those kind of technologies, and, the, and we won the Last Gadget Standing Award. So it's very powerful technology uh, and fun. It's fun to use and useful to use. It helps you learn how to to uh, regulate your emotions. It reduces stress. Uh, it gives you the ability to improve heart-brain coherence and a lot of things. So I recommend you go to the HeartMath sites, heartmath.com or .org, or um, if you're in a, in a country like uh, Scandinavia, go to heartmath.se. You can check out our global partners around the world. We have them in China, and we have them in Australia, and Netherlands, France, UK, a lot of places where we have uh, representatives. So th so this uh, technology in that sense is, is uh, uh, aimed at helping you along to get more familiar, because again, you, you alluded to kind of similarities with a, a biofeedback device before that, you, you can see the direct results, if you will, then on a, on, a, on a screen, but eventually this is something that you should be able to harness even without the technology. Is, is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. You can do it without the technology. It's kind of like the technology is a friendly facilitator. It's sort of like a GPS system in a sense. You know, mm. I got around for most of my whole life without a GPS uh, and found where I needed to be. But now that I have one in my car, it makes it a little easier. <laughs> there you go. So... In terms of health as well, maybe you can talk about that and how uh, the heart function and, and the, the improvement and awareness of the heart uh, is, is connected with health, Howard. Well, when we learn to regulate our emotions and when we learn to improve this heart-brain communication, a whole host of health benefits can occur. First of all, we, we definitely become uh, more revitalized. Uh, that's, not, that's not a direct health benefit, but it's uh, an, an effect of good health. Um, we've seen a lot of changes in things like lowering of blood pressure. We can't make that medical claim, but we certainly have seen it uh, through case histories and through what's been reported back to us by, by people. Uh, changes in things like heart arrhythmia have occurred. We've done studies uh, showing changes in things like diabetes. Uh, again, blood pressure, we've done some studies in companies showing a lowering of blood pressure. It's not a clinical study but it's a, a study showing the effects of heart math techniques and our technology on things like that. Emotional health definitely has improved. Lots of improvement in, uh, with people that suffer from things like anxiety and depression. Uh, that's been improved as well. So a, ho a host of health benefits can occur when we learn to, to operate more uh, coherently internally, improve that heart-brain communication, learn to activate positive emotions more regularly. A lot of things happen in the body that are positive for us. And so, you know, you can look on the sites and see studies and see case histories and things on the websites as well about the, the health benefits of practicing heart math. So the technology is just one of the ways in which people do it, but the tools, techniques, things we offer in our training programs, you combine all that together into a complete system, and then you've got a way of really living your life more from the heart, uh, which goes back to heart-based living, and health improvements are a byproduct of that. So uh, what's next uh, for, for you guys in terms of uh, research? Uh, if, if we talk about the Global Coherence Initiative, for instance, what, what do you think some of the outcome potentially might be of, of some of the research that you're doing? Well, here's the hypothesis of this, is that mass human emotion, whether positive or negative, can have a measurable impact on the Earth itself. So to look at this hypothesis, we have developed technology that measures subtle changes in the Earth's energetic fields. The Earth produces a geomagnetic field, which is what a compass measures. Um, it also produces a field that's connected or associated with the geomagnetic field called the ionosphere, which is less dense. It operates above the atmosphere. And these fields are constantly fluctuating and changing. Now, 
this technology we've developed, we have a, a working sensor site in Northern California. It's measuring these changes as we speak. And our researchers are studying these deals and looking at these things. Our goal is to place uh, 10 to 12 sensor sites around the world to have a complete land-based system that we can look at these changes in the fields. We'll correlate the data that we take in with data from things like the random number generator network that's created by Roger Nelson at Princeton, along with government satellite data, and begin to get a complete picture of these of these these steels and the fluctuations and changes that occur in them. Now, that's the measurement side. The experiment side will be let's take the Global Coherence Initiative members. And by the way, you can check all this out on a site. I'd like to give that URL if I could, if it'd be okay. Yeah, go ahead. It's a G L coherence c o h e r e n c e dot org you can go there and become a member membership is free you become a member of a community of people who are dedicated to using the, their own heart focus care and intention to actually affect consciousness in order to affect positive change and coherence is neutral it's not about adopting a heart math belief system. People do their own prayers, their own meditations, their own affirmations, their own intention exercises, whatever they want to do. We're just saying add the power of the heart to it. Increase the coherence that you're doing it with, and it has more impact. So we'll be doing experiments in the future with the Global Coherence Initiative community where we will be looking at the effects of when we focus the community on a specific outcome, for example. Do we actually see a measurable effect in the ionosphere and or geomagnetic fields? Then taking a step further, do these changes in these fields actually create any kind of positive change in society? Now, we've got a long way to go to prove this out. This is not trivial science. It's being done rigorously and very academically from the ground up. So we're taking it step at a time. And right now, we're building the community. There are over 20,000 members in the Global Coherence Initiative right now. They represent over 79 countries around the world. And we do webinars. We provide information. We provide techniques. We provide guidance on our suggestions for where to send the heart, focus, care, and intention. We're doing all of that now while we are building uh, the, 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 the sensor site technology and placing it around the world. We'll be placing more sensor sites in 2010. We have the working sensor site now in Northern California. Uh, our researchers are, are working with, with that information all the time now. And really what we're looking uh, for is to let's prove that we can create global coherence, something that's measurable that has a positive impact on society. So this is an area for me, after 19 years, and doing a lot of things here at HeartMath, that really excites me. Because I believe for a long, long time that the change really occurs at the, at the level of consciousness first, and then it filters itself down into sort of the psychological frameworks of which we draw reality from, and then those psychological frameworks determine how the world sort of functions, how do systems functions, how do people function. Now, does all that happen? But it starts at the level of consciousness first. So working now at this level... Uh, bringing heart mass expertise and creating heart coherence and its scientific abilities into looking at consciousness research, this is exciting for me. It's something that I'm very passionate about and that I'll speak about around the world. I will be in Europe in 2010. I'll be in, um, in Amsterdam in April with Greg Braden, for example. We talk about this together. I, I don't know if I think you probably know who Greg Braden is. Yeah, we've uh, had him on the program, yes. Yeah, well, he and I are, are close friends. He's also a steering committee member of Global Coherence Initiative. Um, about three or four times a year, we join forces where he and I are, speak together. And we talk about these things, and we'll be in Europe next year doing some of that uh, as well. So it's something we're both very excited about. Uh, we're really glad to, that this project exists. It's helping people who are members to improve their own lives, and it's really bringing people together in a very meaningful and powerful way to, uh, to affect consciousness and then to measure it if we can. So we'll see if we can measure it. It's a hypothesis at this point, uh, but we believe that, it exi that it's possible, and that's what we're setting out to do. So glcoherence.org. 
Okay, uh, the main website uh, is uh, heartmath.org, where you can uh, go to read more about the research and the work of the HeartMath Institute and the uh, EM Wave or uh, M Wave products. And again, heads up then on Howard and uh, Greg's appearance in Amsterdam here next year. And also take a look at glcoherence.org for more on the uh, Global Coherence uh, Initiative. Uh, thank you for joining us on the program, Howard Martin. We'll keep an eye on the developments. Uh, very interesting research indeed, and keep up the great work. Well, thank you very much, Henrik. You keep up the great work. Thanks for having a show like you have, and I hope all of you listening around the world have gotten something of value out of this that you can apply to your own life. That's what's most important to me. Okay, that's our program with Howard Martin. Thank you for listening and for following Red Ice. Enjoy the new year, 2010, the year we make contact, as uh, Arthur C. Clarke wrote. Keep an eye on our website for regular updates and new material. Red Ice is expanding into new areas all the time. My thanks to Fredrik, Elizabeth and Lona, and we will be back with more before you know it. Take care. Bye-bye.